It's a wonderful day in the homie hood, a wonderful day for a homie. Won't you be my homie to Taro? All right, we got actual important news here. It's not actually that important, but it is perhaps very telling of the society that we live in. The Loblaws board says Galen Weston is underpaid and they have boosted his compensation, which if you've been, you know, following this story, aka buying groceries at the supermarket, you might be like, what? How? 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 How can this be real? Grocery executive Galen Weston received a $1.2 million raise in 2022, bringing his total pay to $11.79 million after consultants hired by his family-controlled comp- family controlled company determined that he was underpaid. A billionaire underpaid? Yeah, pretty much. Mr. Weston serves as chairman and president of grocer Loblaws Company Limited and as chairman and chief executive officer of George Weston Limited, the holding company controlled by the Weston family. George Weston is Loblaws' largest shareholder. The Weston family owns 78.65 million shares of George Weston, worth 14.2 billion dollars at Tuesday's prices. Mr. Weston also personally owned stock options in George Weston and La Blah. I, I can't say La Blah. I need the S. I, I, I can't just say La Blah. La Blah? Valued at $42 million as of March 13th, the company said. Mr. Weston's compensation from the two companies was up from $10.6 million in 2021, according to George Weston's management proxy circular. I have no idea what that means. His 2022 pay package included $6.88 million in stock awards, up from $6.11 million. We're just like, um, I, I, honestly, it's just like so disheartening. Dishorten- <laughs> <laughs> disheartening to just like read this it's just like here's how much compensation this billionaire receives regularly and like they and they said it's not enough okay we get it he's a millionaire billionaire bazillionaire la billionaire okay canada's big grocers continue to face public anger for booking higher profits as they pass on rising costs to customers and Loblaw is among those that have pushed back against the criticisms. Earlier this year, the company took to social media in an attempt to explain that inflation is the result of global factors and cannot be blamed on retailers. This is Honestly, it's such a ridiculous political climate that we live in where... Um, you know, the liberals and the NDP try to hold these uh, big grocerigopolies to account. And at the same time, you have the conservative party saying that inflation is all Justin Trudeau's fault. It's just inflation. And you have the NDP also saying that it's greedflation. Um, and then you have the grocery company saying, hey, these are the result of global factors, which is kind of the truth. These are global factors, right? Like, so it's like, you can't really just like bl- throw mud at all the other politicians. Um, however, I think this does reveal an inherent problem with how we structure our our society. And if we have an essential service like food, yeah, maybe it's not a great idea to have billionaires control that industry because in these times of, of, of recession or inflation, then they basically have all the control and they have none of the blame, right? Like they, they, they don't, they're not required to take any responsibility for this, this problem of, uh, you know, food prices being so high and also, you know, people essentially being unable to afford food, which we know is the case. So this is from CP24. Food, Toronto Food Bank demands emergency funding from province as client visits quadruple. I haven't read this either, so we're going through it together. Um, 
but we I want to see this uh, quadrupling stat here. It's the government's duty to ensure that every person in the city is in a position that they can realize their right to food. So today we are raising the alarm bells and will continue to do so. We will not stand silent while our neighbors go hungry. So this is Neil Hetherington, CEO of the Daily Bread Food Bank. It's not about food raising or fundraising at this press conference. It's about raising our collective voices to change the fundamental systems that have driven us to this point. And yeah, that is like, that is exactly my point is like, yeah, it's, it's this poorly redistributed um, way of getting essential services to people. Like we have literal billionaires in the way um, when people want to just get their daily bread. Right. And and we see this gigantic disparity between the rich and the poor. The poor have to line up at food banks and and rich billionaires like Galen Weston are not getting paid enough. And it's like, r r really, r really? Executives at Canada's late largest grocers reiterated that message last month in appearances before the house of commons committee and like nothing good even came out of that committee it was just like gail and weston like parading around um looking into rising food prices our profit levels are reasonable mr weston told the committee well here like here's my thing it's like why have profit why even have profit in a some in an essential service that we all need you know why doesn't the profit go back to the people, um, uh, the, the the taxpayers? And, you know, you can invest that in more homegrown food, you know, like that, that, that would make sense to me. Instead, it's just getting pulled out of our communities and, and going up to the 1% top of the pyramid people like the Westons. Um, the results of Meridian's 2022 review suggested that Mr. Weston's total direct compensation was below the market median and Weston's and Loblaw's compensation policy objectives. So, okay, this is just like so sad. So I guess this is the justification is like, well, other CEOs uh, are getting paid more. So therefore, um, Weston should get paid more oh it's like oh this is so sad at metro inc's annual meeting in january the montreal-based investor group medac le mouvement d'education et de defense de actionnaires or shareholder education and defense movement i should have just read that english part question the optics of bonuses for grocery executives at a time of high inflation group representative willie gagnon winner Gagnon, his name is literally Willie Gagnon, uh, referred to an opinion piece in La Presse by Sylvain. Oh my God, the food professor strikes again. The director of the Agriculture Food Analytics Lab at Dalhousie University, which pointed out the sensitivity of awarding such bonuses while food prices have surged. We literally cannot get through a article about rising inflation and the cost of food without Sylvain Charlebois, aka the food professor, aka someone who was like paid money by the Westons in order to like spin his, you know his data in a certain way, you know, and in this case, I mean, he's not even doing anything wrong. I'm just so annoyed with seeing his name. So anyways, the yada, 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 Canadian Tire Corp said compensation fell for the company's top executives because of much smaller annual bonuses. CEO Greg Hicks made 6.5 million down from 6.92 million. Jeez, once you're making money in the millions, like, does making like half a million more even change your quality of life or change really anything for you? I really just don't feel for these people. You know, like if I was making $7 million, which, you know, let's face it, one day as a the most famous Canadian streamer on the planet, maybe I will. I could like, wouldn't you be... Of course, like, while well, you'd be paying your taxes, which I guess is not enough as a rich person, but you could also just, like, do so much good with that money, you know? Like, you could transform a city like Peterborough and make it into a hustling arts and culture hub for the region, or for, you know? Like, there's so much you could do 
with with uh, with money in the millions. The needs of Canadians changed multiple times on a full 180 over the course of the last three years. Okay, uh, yada, yada, yada. So in conclusion, I hate the Westons. And it's uh, ridiculous that in this time of quadrupling food bank lines that somebody like Galen and his billionaire family needs to get paid more money. The shareholders are priority by law. The executive boards are legally obliged to make decisions. Yeah, I know. But I mean, this is the whole part of the hierarchy that is like, this is why it's problematic, right? And it's like, okay, well, we have to have these middlemen, these billionaire middlemen that are legally binded to their shareholders to make more money profiting off of something that is an essential service that we all need. Right. And then and we talk about this all the time. We wouldn't want that to happen with healthcare, even though that's the the road we're going down. But we let it happen with things like access to food. So we need the we need these systems to evolve. Why not make sure you don't miss the next video by liking, commenting, subscribing, and ringing the bell. Thank you so much for watching. It's my homie to Taro. Peace.